I got my master's degree here at Berkeley in 1949, and uh, it was a very rigid experience. Uh, the subject was the Berkeley School, and we were all learning the structure that Hans Hoffman had propelled. Of course, the students didn't like that rigidity. But nevertheless, all of us have brought it with us through our art experiences. I'm an artist <laughs> because that's what I'm comfortable doing, not about writing or talking or whatever. But, um, and I went to school here. I, had, I got my BA in 68 and my master's in 70. Uh, at that time, there were no women on the faculty, and we were told that in, temp in 10 years, only 10% of us would still be artists, and none of them would be women. Now, the women part, I disagree with, but the 10% probably is true because it's difficult, but uh, very fulfilling. I, just, I, I was in the class of 53, had wonderful teachers. Marvelous, and I stayed act. I do not have a degree. I dropped out of school in order to marry, and then I never stopped my work. I lived near Stephen Pepper, who was the department chairman of this school for the art, the philosopher, and the influence of these men in the department was very strong and Margaret Peterson O'Hagan was teaching then, and so we did in fact have a woman on the faculty. It has been wonderful to be an artist. I have a family of three children, and I never stopped my work. Um, I went through what we call a third degree. I did all three degrees here, BA, MA, MFA, in a hurry. Uh, learned a lot um, and still learning. Turns out that I didn't know nearly as much as I did when I graduated as I do now. Of course, the age and experience makes the difference no matter what we do in art, it seems. Um, I taught at City College of San Francisco in the art department uh, for 34 years. Uh, I taught drawing, design, uh, photography, well, so many aspects of art things. Around that time, I learned that art was kind of like a virus. Uh, and that uh, as you get older, it stays with you and it picks up. It's moved into technological ends. Uh, and it's varied as I thought art processes were in the past. Uh, they're much more varied today and there are many more people that fit into the name, of the, 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 that tag that we have called artist now than ever. Uh, I actually went to the Rhode Island School of Design and I came to Cal to get my teaching credential in the late 70s, early 80s. And I happened to take all the most interesting courses, as my advisor said. I have continued since I graduated in 1967 to do my art. Um, first, I was a sculptor for 25 years. In the last 15 years, I've been doing mixed media works on paper. So I went from two-dimensional to, uh, excuse me, three-dimensional to two-dimensional work. I came to California in 1971 to go to Mills College, where I have uh, a BA from, and I left a little bit. I left California and I took up doing other things, and then I came back to the Bay Area, Bay Area uh, to get my master's degree at SF State. Uh, that was I finally finished it in the '85, and since then I've uh, painted and. Um, taken part in the Bay Area art community and uh, tried to stay painting even though I had to work, which is a challenge. A challenge because you don't really have time, you just have to make it. I'm a painter and a writer and uh, I did uh, an undergrad degree <clears throat> in art history back in the East Coast, Lancaster, Pennsylvania at Franklin and Marshall College. And then I did a second undergrad in painting at the University of Maryland, College Park. Um, and I moved to the Bay Area 13 years ago. Um, I've had studio space in collaborative settings, 
um, and but right now I have my studio on my own in my own home so I'm kind of dealing with the challenges of missing that community and keeping the work going um, so that's something I would always like to hear other people's experience and wisdom about but I lived in the Bay Area since 1972, but I studied art in New York, went to Pratt Institute. I worked for UC Berkeley for about 11 years in the, in the 80s, the early 90s, and um, I have an art studio in San Francisco, Hunters Point Shipyard. I was here at uh, Berkeley in the art department. Uh, from uh, 19, I guess it was, 72 to 75. I um, decided that uh, the most exciting thing that was happening in the art world at that time for me was that Christo was coming to do The Running Fence. <laughs> and so I said, well, I'm not going to miss this opportunity. And at that time, I, um, I thought about it and then decided I'm not going to be an art historian. I'm not going to be a sculptor. Um, I enjoy being with people a lot. I need to do something that's really going to uh, continue this working on projects and working with artists. And that's when I committed to buying two cameras, little Olympuses, and uh, started working on the Christo project. And that was the beginning of my project work and I continued doing it all these years. Follow your muse, follow, stay with what you believe in, and uh, don't give up, persevere. And I feel I'm, I've become an elder and I'm still, I'm still doing the same thing, I'm still looking, searching, and it's a journey to stay with it. It never has been really that lucrative, but it's great for the few as it is with all forms. And you must love it, most of all, you must love yourself, and everything else seems to blend in over time. Just do what you need to do that, you know, what, what your feelings are. Don't, uh, don't try to uh, uh, bow down to what others are, are telling you. What, you're gonna be an artist? No, yeah, I taught to make myself get through and did all kinds of odd jobs as well because uh, it's just necessary to do that when you're making the work continue. I need a lot of advice myself at this point, but you know, I would just say sure that you come out and just engage with the world around you. Otherwise, um, it just doesn't make sense if you don't connect with the larger picture and keep pushing and, and engage with the complexities that are around you and that are around in the world. If you're going to be an artist, you must learn, uh, first of all, perseverance. Uh, there's a lot of uh, things to, uh, that will stand in your way. And if I have a, had a resume of all the, the jobs that I had over the last 40 years, it would be a mile long, mm -hmm. just in order to continue to do my work. I never stopped, no matter what, doing my work. But I think I'm an exception. Um, a lot of people who go to art school and graduate in the fine arts end up doing something else and then they let the fine arts part slip. For some reason I never did that and I still don't. And uh, I'm going to be 70 in a uh, month after next and I have been an artist my whole life and I continue to be an artist and will continue to be an artist until I can't even raise my hand <laughs> for a pencil or a paintbrush. My advice is to join a group what I did was uh, do fig a figure painting group that was very regular, Tuesday mornings. And it just kept me physically touching paint and paper, um, looking, trying to think about putting together an image. Uh, that helped. And now I have just had two years off work and it's been great. And I hope that things will build. I do public art 
So for large, for cities and, and government buildings and, um, and it ranges in me media. And I also do my own work, which is sculpture out of various materials ranging from uh, bronze to plexiglass. And what I would say to young people, if you're going to ask me that, every once in a while somebody will come to my studio, which is in Colorado, uh, where I live. Um, they ask me what it's like to be an artist, which is sublime, but should they do it? And I say, if you have to ask that question, then no. Because art is for those who are determined and, and really have no choice. That's what they do. If you tell them not to do art, they're still going to wake up and start doing art. So that's who it's for. And then you still have to work hard at your art because it's an infinite path of learning and discovery and change. And um, also because it's not easy to make it. I, I do public art uh, and that sort of helps with my gallery art, but people find a way. You know. Don't ever think that you know what you're about, because um, I think you can always perpetually find that you surprise yourself, and when you're making a body of work and um, something catches your eye that you think doesn't really fit with you, pay attention to that, because I think it's telling you something and uh, should be followed up on. Wow. The work is always a discovery and one can come home from the studio and literally feel fulfilled. Not every day, of course, but there are those moments when you have this emotional and spiritual fulfillment. Choosing uh, to have a career in the arts is not like choosing to have a career um, it's not like most career choices. I think that it's essentially um, a revolutionary choice um, and that you have to be committed to living a life that is an examined life and a life that uh, avoids the worn path in favor of forging a new path, which is not always financially easy and it's not always easy to sustain. And um, but it's doable. Many people do it. And I would say your life is a, a part of your practice. And figuring out how to sustain that practice is a creative act in the same way that creating your artwork is a creative act. Um, and both require courage and um, conviction and sacrifice. Take in with those factors the people that you respect want to give you and then go on your own because you have to have confidence. Art is a tough discipline and it's fight, fight, fight all the way. So we must believe in ourselves so other people can believe in what we do.